What is war? Uh, what yeah. war? <laughs> Pakistan and India War of 1971. That one. the circumstances of the Okay, sit up here. Okay, okay. 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 Because all of you are asking for story, so I might have to come to. Okay. This is a story about war which was fought between India and Pakistan. I was a colonel and I was born in a regiment which is from Madras. We were on defense. <coughs> Pakistan is <coughs> We had been given the job not to attack. Because we had finished our attack in Bengal side and we had created a new country known as Bangladesh. Pakistan had been defeated. On the Punjab side, Pakistan was attacked. And it was a fierce pull attack. Every time they came. And for an army to be in defense, it was a disadvantage. Because you have to fight everything on your own chest. Alright? Now the war is going on. And one fine day, it was too far. It was about 9 o'clock in the morning, winter. And it was unbelievably quiet. And I called my one or two officers and I said, Look, there's something going wrong. And they said, what can go wrong? I said, there's something wrong today. This is called the promotion. And I said, Pakistan is going to do something. So let's do it. So I spoke to my company commanders, which were slightly ahead of my position. So I spoke to each one of them. And I said, look, you have to be very watchful. Pakistan is going to do something today. And unless you are careful, something is going to happen. After about half an hour, you could hear some noise from one corner. Now, when I'm saying the war is on, that means we are in contact. The enemy is not far off more than about 500, 600 yards away. We are on this side and they are on this side. There's nothing in the field except the fields. Now, we heard the noise, <coughs> then we heard the dust. And we knew the Pakistan tanks are moving. All right. Now I got onto the wireless and asked for the air support because as an infantry officer, when you command the troops, then all these forces which come air force, or tanks, all these come under his command. So I asked for the air support and I asked them to tell me what is happening and who is moving where from which side to what side. I have no information. And for the next 45 minutes I got no answer. No aircraft was inside. Nothing came. I called about 10 times. I said, look, I can see the tanks moving. At least some air force has to move in now. They are out of my range. Nothing moved. Nothing came. And the only answer I was given is that when we are free from the other sector, then we will move into the your side. We are very heavily committed on the other And the tanks were moving right from my head. And I knew something would go wrong. Now all four company commanders in front are now getting panicky. And they are saying the Pakistan tanks in the sea move towards us. It's about 11 o'clock now in the morning. Bright sun, winter, you can see quite far. And it's a big, tricky situation where you know the enemy is coming and you can't do anything. At 11.30, I again asked for the air support. Nothing came. At 12 o'clock, 
two aircrafts of Indian Air Force came. <coughs> they dive bomb and they bombed my position in school. <laughs> Oh my, oh my gosh. This is how the boss starts. And then this fighter pilot going back gives a report, enemy bombed, casualties <laughs> being reported. And I said, you son of a bitch, I have heard, I've seen your report. <laughs> Don't have to give me a report. Because he had bombed my own company. Hmm. Now past 1230. The tanks are massing on one side for an attack into my position. Alright? Now remember the tanks in India and Indian conditions use the K line. They don't have the infrared line. They don't have some capability to attack by line. Now they have. So I knew the attack will come in now. And the system is that they will attack just before the evening. So that they capture the position and then the infantry moves in to occupy. Okay. Now some of these things you do as a young officer or a, when you are young. The young man I'm saying I used to work for it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I took a decision. Yeah, I, I took a decision oh. that unless I do something drastic now, there is no escape because Pakistan is going to attack me now. I have a total of nine tanks with me. That's all I have. Which could move, others couldn't move. I put those nine tanks on another flank and I told them, it does not matter whether you live or die. Move right in front of my company positions at top speed and fire on the Pakistan tanks. You see, this is a very wrong way of fighting a war. Because they could all be shot. And I told them, just move in one line. You know, not this way, this way. Mass yourself with this and move this way. So nobody would know how many tanks are moving. I get that. And I get medium guns which are the heads, which fire big bombs. I use those guns to fire on Pakistan. Pakistan tanks were about within range, they are moving quite close now. I fired on the tanks. Move these tanks in bright daylight for everyone to see. And do you know what happened? Pakistan tanks turned back and moved behind. <laughs> they thought we are coming in for an attack on it. All right. That's All right. Awesome. Now, this is what happens. Now, when I saw the tanks moving back side, I said, okay, now we have to do something more. I took my jeep, took my officers. Took my tank officer, tank my took my artillery officer, and we moved up. Now there's another stupid thing to do. Now. Bright sunlight. When you see when you see these type of things, these are stupid things, but they give you marvelous okay, award attempts. I moved in bright daylight and I moved from my position in G. And in war you have the open jeep, completely everything is open, while it's an offset. And Pakistan saw me, saw me coming. You know what they did? They took me as a target and started opening fire on me. Oh I didn't know. In one of the trees, which was on the border, is one of the op OP, it's called an OP, person who sits on top, watches and directs the fire. He is spotted me. And later on, after the war, he told me that we knew it was with the current movie to see what is happening. They tried to bombard my position, my jeep. And for 45 minutes, they bombarded my jeep. 
I was right in the open and I, my chief was blown off, my one officer was injured, my tractor was injured and you know where I was lying? In the peak with this much of a pump. You know, there is a, in a peak, you have place which takes water from one place to another. What do you think? Yeah. No, no, this is a drain. Corrugated is fine. Yeah, just a, yeah. This is mucky. Yeah. And I, this was not even 12 inches high. Dolly. And I was lying in that. Nani? Yeah. Nani? 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 And that is all which saved me for those 45 weeks of apartment in my, my head. Wait, you were inside there? See, that is it is uh, a drain. Uh, drain. Uh, you know, to me the water is broken. That pipe is open to the amount of mud. Oh, 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 I know. It, 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 that, that shift. And then, you know, water flows from oh. one field to oh, one field to the other. I know. You know, like little it, 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 it is yeah, a ditch. You know? no, I am lying down here. This is a ditch. I am lying down on one side here. And the bombs are coming to the side, busking it right on my head. And the ricochet is going over my head and I'm saying. So you didn't get hit at all? Oh, that day I didn't. Oh, <laughs> you know the, that uh, bomb now, the shell that you have seen in our house? Mm -hmm. The brass one? That fell about 100 yards ago. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, it leaves all that um, and I, things inside. And the bombardment stopped. I rushed in my jeep, went to my <coughs> position. And that position was absolutely on the border between Pakistan and us. And for four and a half hours that night, Pakistan fired in that position, just trying to destroy it. And get away. Oh, then the guard was night in that night. But you saved the position. If that night the attack is coming, it's a problem. Now, that night, three attacks came from Pakistan in that position. And we were quite safe because they were dug up in a strong position. Nothing happened. But cutting the story short, at the end of the war, cutting on the opposite side. The war had finished, but the family used to carry on everything all day. So one day I asked him to leave. I said, if your current wants to come and meet, I will come and meet. So we raised bike and then came out and gone. Now that's a long story, but when you meet the opposite side, he doesn't want to come to your side. There is enemy. And you don't want to meet the other. <laughs> who should walk that distance which is in between, say about 150 yards in between? Who should walk where? Because every inch there is a minefield. You just don't know where you put your foot and which is... The minefield is a part of compact. They are put inside the ground. The moment you put your feet, put, you are blown, blown up. Oh. It gets blown up, you know, those are the mines. So you don't know where the bombs are. are that big and they are placed in distances, you know, inside we the ground. They have minefields. The Pakistan has come and put some minefields of their own. And they yeah. complete commotion and nobody wants to walk over it. Anyway, he came over, that night came over this side, nobody would move forward. So I shouted across from the side with the microphone. Then look, I didn't come up. You come halfway and I come up. He said, I don't know where your mind is. Yeah, I'm not coming. So I said, no, I come to you. Follow me and just see where I'm coming. You can come. So anyway, he was very, uh, very nervous. And I was never school because I didn't know. The fire had been going on every day, every night, and they wanted to stop it. So when I walked, I walked on the same type of drain. Because you don't ever put a bomb right on top of the drain. It's normally on the ground. So I took the same analogy and moved on this burn. I went through yards and I said, Karna. I want to meet you. He said, how do you know my name? 
I said, I know your name. Come on, it's a, it's a good Punjab. And you've been right opposite me throughout the world, and I know where exactly you, you are and where you come from. He said, what do you know more about me? I said, you are a student of State College. This is what you have done. These are the courses you have done, and I know everything about you. He said, are you from intelligence or you are from the infantry? I said, I'm from both. I said, but that's tough. Why are you telling people the war is finished? So I said, what do you mean war is finished? I said, a new country has been formed on the other side. He said, this is what India talks. We have not been defeated. We have not got a ceasefire. We don't know anything known as the Bangladesh. I said, there is no need to fight for it now. I'm only saying, why don't we stop fighting? Why are we killing people after the ceasefire? Anyway, it took about an hour. You know, we kept doing this. And he won't come forward. And I will move forward more than what I had to. So he said, something happened. He said, I teach you Indians a lesson and I will fire you. Can you just come? I had gone forward and I opened my bed and told them I just need to back to go and look at. So I said, Karnama, you are a staff college graduate of Quetta and I am a staff college graduate of India. We are both professional soldiers, but don't teach me how to fight a war. He said, what do you mean? I said, you think you can kill me and go away from me? He said, what do you do? I said, you want to see? I should. I had a young officer who was six feet seven inches. You are washed. Yes, Sadar. Sadar. Sikh. His name was Mahil. His captain Mahil. Then, then he was second at Mahil. So I said, I am sure you know that we have six officers in our army. My intelligence officer is a Sikh officer. I show you that officer. So I put my hand forward and he stood up on one side. And this chap saw the Sikh. Tall, huge, hefty. They couldn't believe it that you have Sikhs of this height. So they were young officers who were there. They were not scared. So he said, What else do you want to show me? He was getting very upset at this. So I said, I think you might I might look a very casual person coming forward without a weapon, but the place where standing now is covered completely by my tanks and my guns. Proceed. He said yes. The other hand, and I said yes. And there was nine tanks. That's all I had. <laughs> they all threw their camouflage necks and said, "Ready to fire." He looked up. He couldn't believe it. And all pointing to the same spot where he was standing. I said, "You want to see more?" He said, "Yes, show me." So I had my I had my artillery officer. I said, give me a report. There's a divisional artillery ready to fire. I told this officer, I said, 84 guns are ready to fire on your on this spot where you stand here. So he says, I do. Can only tell you one thing. I will accept the reason how we lost the war. <laughs> Just the shortest story, long story. So when you fight a war, even though you might look a very casual person, you have to be fully prepared. And this is not only war in your life, forever. you have to be absolutely prepared for everything. And think about it and do your homework. <laughs>